We've also used uh, YouTube to record. So I actually don't want my students to write. I just want to know what happened. And it turns out it's much easier for them to do a video of the experimental setup and just write in the log, you know, I set up the experiment. Because I can actually see all the stuff that they wouldn't think to write. And I just find it interesting that this little video of a, of a, a, a round bottom flask has, has 5,600 views, right? So there's something going on. People are interested in this. We also use mailing lists. Mailing lists are basically useful for collaborating between groups, for working out annoying details. You know, every experiment has those, and uh, mailing lists are good for that. On the Chem Informatics, if you're familiar with Second Life, we now have tools in Second Life to construct 3D molecules based only on the smiles or inchy. So if you're interested in that, talk to me. But there's, my students are doing projects now where they don't have to put in scripting because we have tools that do that automatically and minimize the 3D structure. You can also talk to uh, molecules. Here, this is a, uh, an aldehyde and an amine. You tell them to react and they go through each intermediate to form the imine. And each, interme each intermediate has been minimized so it's realistic in its 3D shape. We can even look at NMR spectra or any spectrum that is in JCAM format. You can talk to the spectrum in Second Life, and it'll zoom in to the region that you want. So Second Life is really becoming a pretty cool environment for discussing you know, some pretty high-level chemistry. You really could do that with your students. Another way that we're uh, disseminating information, we have the SIF files from our uh, X-ray crystallography. Now Drexel has a, a, a site of e-crystals, which is freely available. Other people have started to do this kind of open notebook science. Gus Rosania at Michigan um, has also converted his group to this wiki uh, interface where his students are reporting in real time with what they're doing. Cameron Nyland is also a very strong proponent of open notebook science. He doesn't use a wiki. He uses his own, his own customized software, but it's the same kind of concept. And Real quick, some of the other things we've, we've done, if you're interested, you can talk to me about this later. But with JCAMP, again, you can write uh, scripts in, 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 a, in Visual Basic for Excel, and you can have it calculate rates of reactions. And finally, where we're headed with all this, I think we want to move from an environment where humans are interacting with each other to having machines interact with each other. But the only way we're going to get there is if we represent the execution of the experiment in a machine-friendly way. So what we've been doing is translating our logs using a strict terminology. So for example, if we want to specify methanol, we would actually use this inchi key. So this script is pretty simple for a machine to understand, and it should be able to replicate what actually happened in this experiment. And uh, we've had uh, the good luck of having a mini mapper, uh, a, a robot in our lab, that was on loan to us, and we've been able to actually do 48 experiments at the same time. These are uh, <clears throat> little tubes that have a filter in them. So in this experiment, we basically mix chemicals together, and the product comes out as a precipitate. So that's sort of the idea here, is to try to figure out how to get the highest yield and how to get you know a, as much pure product as possible. So we can program the mini mapper to execute those experiments. And in the spirit of openness, we use Google Docs. And we can just copy the Google Docs to the Mettler Toledo software so that the person who's running the Mettler Toledo software doesn't necessarily have to know the experimental design to be able to provide the results. So the idea here is that you could have true crowdsourcing, where people from around the world who have expertise in experimental design of this experiment could request some experiments to be done within the confines of our experimental setup. And because we're making our results public, they could also benefit from that without us even really being fully aware of everything that's going on. So anyways, that's, that's sort of the bigger picture of this. And the machine, of course, uh, understands XML. So that makes it much, much easier than trying to read the, the human-generated logs. That's the one advantage that we have with, with machines, obviously. And uh, so, yeah, that's basically the, the, the bigger concept here is, you know, I think we're going to move towards a world where machines are going to be able to design experiments, execute them, and analyze them, 
but I don't think it's going to happen within the same unit. I think it's going to happen in a distributed way around the world, much in the same way that the internet works now. Everybody contributes their own little part. And uh, that's my take home message is basically, you know, it's fun to talk about these things, but let's start to do them. And we can discuss standard, like JCAMP is something that emerged, but we didn't decide on JCAMP before doing this. We, we fell upon JCAMP as a convenient solution to our problem. And uh, try to get your data out in as many different formats as you possibly can with this new technology. That's it.